You looking for games? Oh yeah, dude, we got games at F***o Land. The store with a name so cool, we can't even say it on TV. Come get some sweet deals. Trade in your old boring games for cool new ones. Anything's possible at f***ing F***o Land in the Voorhees Memorial Shopping Center on the other side of Caldor at the old Tats and Vape Shop. Hey, Mike, what's with all of this? Oh, it's just something I set up. I haven't been coming into the store because Doom Eternal's out, so I've been playing a hell of a lot of Doom Eternal. I've been getting really into it, and I'll be back at some point, but right now, um, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to stay at home. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that right now. Trade-ins are piling up. Actually, um, at GameStop, they're doing curbside pickup, you know? So we just put everything in the back on the curb out there. Uh, and we left the box so people can put uh, money in, kind of like on Halloween, like the honor system. Right, yeah, that, that makes sense. At some point, I'll just come and pick up the giant box of money. Uh, don't take too long, because eventually that money probably won't be worth anything. Uh, so people might use it as toilet paper. All right, so let's talk about Doom Eternal. Yes, the, the, the second best game that came out on March 20th, next to Animal Crossing. Right? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Well, you know what? I, I learned a lot recently about Animal Crossing with you, Justin. And uh, if the game was what you made the game, I'd be playing Animal Crossing. But it's it's not the game that you made. <laughs> I have been instead playing Doom Eternal, which just came out. And I've been getting really into it. I played through the whole game. and. I'll just say right off the bat that I absolutely love the game. I have v almost no problems with the game whatsoever. So there you go. It's a modern game that I love and I barely have anything uh, to complain about with it. And I think um, for me, you know, as somebody who plays a lot of the old Doom games, uh, I think it's a game that really um, is in tune and in line with uh, the classic Doom games. Like I get that Doom feeling from playing the new one. Um, did you make sure to set up your Bethesda.net account before you played? Okay, well, that was, yeah, there you go. That was one thing that was a little annoying, yeah. Well, you know what, though? That's like all modern games. They always want you to, they want your email so that they can send you advertisements, and it's like, you better get used to it. It's like, it's like Nintendo. It's like, oh, our online system, you know, is free, but, you know, as long as you sign up for this fucking, you know, thing. Yeah, that, that, that's the first key card you pick up in Doom Eternal is the, but that's the, <laughs> but that's the, the fuck, uh. the, the, the thing about it is, even though, yes, they are taking your information, and, you know, I don't want yet another account to manage they did make it easy to set it up yeah it, it wasn't that big of a deal yeah. i thought i already had one but i didn't which is weird because i play so much wolfenstein and stuff yeah. but you know so when it's easy to give your rights away it's not a problem right <laughs> you know i i played it on on pc i thought about playing it on consoles i thought about playing it on, on a controller and then i said to myself you know this is a doom game i'm definitely gonna play it on pc and i i went that way um I I think it's fun. I, I felt like because the game was delayed and all of that, that there was so much hype, like this is gonna be the second coming of Doom, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. I think it's a good game. I don't think it's the best game, and I hate to say it, yeah. I don't think it's a great game. Oh, I mean, it's not as, I guess you wanna say groundbreaking as Doom 2016 or the new, um, you know, uh, New Order, the Wolfenstein game. Yeah, you know this is definitely a better sequel than New Colossus was. Right. Um, I mean, I, I put 25 hours into this game on PC. I uh, got 100% of all the collectibles, and I, I thought it was fun. Uh, I thought there were things that were lacking here and there, which I, you know I'll go into later. I made a list of what I don't like and what I do like and whatever. But yeah, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Am I gonna play it again soon? Maybe. I kind of have to move on to Animal Crossing, Half Life Alex. There's a lot of stuff out right now. Yeah, I, I do have to say that. Out of everything, I am happy that you enjoyed it, though, Mike, because I'm really happy when you play modern games and get into them. Well, uh, you said you were playing with a keyboard and mouse. See, I've been playing it with a Wii Nunchuck controller. Um, it's a much better experience if you're using the Nunchuck, and not the Wii mode itself, only the Nunchuck. Just, just the, the thumbs. Just the thumb. Because what I did is I got myself a... Um, 
you know, Wii nunchuck to USB adapter, and then I plug that into my PC. So I've just been playing it like that. It's I like I really recommend trying that. So maybe that's the problem. You know what? Um, so so I, I'll show a picture. So I, I still play PC games with my arrow keys. Um, cause I've been doing that since the original Doom and I've been doing it through Quake and through, uh, Unreal Tournament. I, I re, like, I don't use WASD, I use the arrow keys and this game has too many buttons to hit now with all the extra gizmos and melee. So everything's on my mouse and I, and I hunt around my computer like a claw, um, which is frightening. In all seriousness, so it's like, since it does add more controls than like original Doom, um, it's it's a different thing. I like to play original Doom with uh, keyboard and mouse, um, or like, well, back in the '90s it was just keyboard, and then you know now I do like the mods like Project Brutality and all that. I'll, I'll use a mouse. When I started playing this game, I, I played it on um, Xbox One X, and the reason I did that is because I had been thinking at some point maybe I could do James and Mike Mondays uh, with James and and do like a multiplayer thing or try it with him. And he doesn't do keyboard and mouse at all. So if I was gonna um, if we were ever going to do that, I had been playing the game with uh, a controller so that we could possibly eventually do that. So I started playing it with a controller, and um, it, it's, it's fine. And it, honestly, that might even be better for me because since these new Doom games have the melee attack and more controls and things going on, I, I can play uh, these games with a keyboard and mouse, but when you start adding more and more controls, um, it get that gets a little tough for me. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like a game that was made specifically for controllers. Things that have bumpers on them and all that. Because when I'm on the keyboard, it's like messy. Like there's more, there's more buttons than like Overwatch has or something like that. Because there's like literally three or four melee uh, attacks, and you got to switch. You you're constantly switching your grenade type. You're sw you're constantly switching. Um, different mods you have on your guns. It's a little too much. And when you're in the harder levels, especially on uh, Ultra um, Violence or Nightmare, you start, f I started fumbling with the controls and it was getting real frustrating. I die for dumbass reasons. I, I do have to say that the keyboard and mouse layout seems very, very, very stacked against people that have aggressive keybinds like you do, where you're just remapping everything because yeah. everything from oh, I'm using my chainsaw, to I'm using my flamethrower, to I'm using the punch, all center around like the WASD keys. Yeah, and, and, uh, and when, when you're using the arrow keys, there, those buttons don't exist there. So you're using like end and page down and <laughs> and and another example of something that you said that you kind of shy away from when you play that I used all the time was switching the attachments. Like for instance, being able to switch to the sticky bomb with the shotgun yeah. to take out a cacodemon and have two. So two cacodemons show, show up. I go grenade, sticky bomb, yeah. boom, boom. I, I upgraded all the guns, like every mod, every yeah. gun, 100%. But um, especially with the we weapon mastery things where you don't have to do it, you just say, okay, I unlock them. Um, but I only use mainly one attachment per weapon, and I just yeah. switch weapons a lot. It actually, I, like most of the game, I had been playing with the uh, sticky bomb, but now I'm starting to go through the game on Nightmare, and I don't know if you really tried using the auto mod for the shotgun at all, but that's actually that's actually really awesome because it's just like fi just continually firing shotgun shells like really really fast the way like a mach the chain gun or something can the only problem with that is you run out of um ammo like really quickly you can always you know go ahead and you know melee somebody and get it back but you only get i think 16 shotgun shells but uh that so all all the weapon mods are um you know are, are really cool i'd like to just talk about some of the things that i really like about the game i want to talk about the things we like about the game and dislike. yeah let's talk about the things we like the things we don't like then we can go into like some story or something like that okay. which i know is your least favorite part of these games <laughs> one of the big things that like jumped out at me when i first started playing was the graphics and the color of the game a lot of modern games have uh i find very dark sort of grays and blacks and and, and they keep it very uh like dark this doom isn't really like that and i found this game even more colorful than doom of 2016 yeah which is like you're pretty much in like a factory that in, in hell that into everything was red and dirty and mars and ghost of mars looking or is this was very pr there's a lot of pretty locations in this one to yeah, be honest um, like 
like, there's a level here called the um, Super Gore Nest or something, and in the Gore Nest, like, you're looking at purples and reds and greens, and, like, there's just color everywhere, and why I, why I bring that up and why I think that's great is going back to the old Doom games, Doom 1 and Doom 2, you, you're going through hell in the old games, and those games are very colorful, um, and I like that they... Whoever did the color design on this game, for me, um, really, like, nailed it. So that's one thing. The weapons, I think all of the weapons in the game are useful. Uh, there isn't one weapon where I'm like, oh, that weapon sucks. Like, I actually will use every single weapon in, in the game. And they have some new ones. It's not just all the classic, you know, old weapons. They have a, the Ballista weapon, which is a new one. And they have uh, what? What is the other one? That's the new one. I'm trying to think of it. The the yeah. the, the 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 other um, mega one that uses the BFG energy. It's it's the the unmaker. Oh, there's that. Oh, there's by the way, there's also the sword, and you get a, you get a sword. Oh, the the yeah, the, the crucible sword is pretty cool. Yeah. So not only do you have you know your regular shotgun, but like Ryan was saying, you have all the different mods that you can put on. So. While it has all the, you know, original, um, you know, the shotgun and the chain gun and whatever, it's like uh, they're giving you new things to do with the old weapons. Like for the super shotgun, you have like a chain that you can shoot out to grab onto enemies. Oh, I love the meat hook. That was, that helped so much in the game. That was like the funnest part, especially with the slow-mo rune and stuff. You can do a lot of fun shit with that goddamn hook. I, I watched Justin play a good bit of the game before I played it myself. And that was one of the first things I saw and I was like, oh wow, that's yeah, really like awesome. Zip He's like around. zipping around, yeah, hitting yeah. things. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, I could go through all of them, but, uh, you know, you get the idea. The, they upgraded the weapons, and uh, they, they gave you new things to do with the old weapons, which I think is great. So another major thing that I think they did right with this game for me is the music. Uh, a lot of newer games um, have music to where... Uh, there, there really is no music. A lot of modern games just have very atmospheric uh, background music, and and you don't really get, you know, you don't really get much, you know, of actual music. And that's something that you know, you play the old Doom games, all the levels, it's just continual music the whole, the whole time. And uh, from what I remember in the 2016 Doom, I think you own, the music ramped up when you got to enemy encounters and i find that this game has music going the whole time like as you're playing for, for me i like that better because when it just when everything just gets silent for a really long time it gets boring to me like i like to have music it keeps me like awake um so that really kept me engaged and the music itself is like it's doom music like through and through like when you turn it on when you're playing it it's like that you know you know like he like heavy metal like it, it's super aggressive it, it was the same guy who did the music for the last game 2016 and also the wolfenstein games um he's fucking fantastic and yeah and usually like after an encounter the music will ramp down a little but then it'll go into like another score or things like that depending on where you are um it, it definitely feels really good so I played this game, like I said, on the Xbox One X because I wanted to do the James and Mike Monday thing. And I started playing the multiplayer. And I, I like the multiplayer a lot, actually. Um, I remember Ryan and I, we did a video years back, and I think we played the beta version and did the multiplayer. Do you remember that, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. And I remember we didn't like it. Yeah, um, the Doom 2016 multiplayer was, I mean... I don't know. I just don't think it kept up with the times of the other shooters that were available. I sh when, when I played it and I shit on it. And at PAX East, they're having like this thing where you get to hang out with one of the revenants. And my tweet came up behind it, and I was like, "Oh, this game, the multiplayer sucks." Because I tweeted at Bethesda, oh, my fucking gosh. asshole. But then Doom 2016 turned out to be one of my favorite games. I just never played the multiplayer like right. it, like it already has a multiplayer game which is called quake and i don't think doom's multiplayer has ever done it justice yeah i mean i think that th the last time that doom was like a forerunner in multiplayer gaming was really like doom 2 to be totally yeah. honest yeah. like so so this this multiplayer it, it it was definitely really i thought weird at first um, so instead of just like one on one, like you're playing like Quake Live or something, it's not like that. You're like three different uh, people. One person's the Slayer, and then two people can be the demons. And I, f at first, when I first started playing it, I was the Arch Vile, and I didn't know what the controls were. I was so 
like out of it because it's just it's just not you're just not going around and just shooting the other guy like you would expect um if you are one of the demons all the demons control differently and um when i was first thrown into it i was like oh i'm gonna hate this but then once i learned uh the different characters um i actually really enjoyed it i started playing as the pain elemental and you can with him you can like drop down and spawn other like demons on the ground so if you're fighting somebody in multiplayer um they have to be the slayer and you and your friend you know maybe your friend is the marauder or something like that um i just really enjoyed the idea of being able to um you know uh just throw throw enemies down on the ground and spawn demons down on the ground while those guys are all going after the slayer then i'm like you know, doing doing my own attacks and dashing around and doing what I can to avoid the Slayer's attacks. I thought it was a really inter- interesting way for them to go about it because I haven't seen anything quite like that before, and I, I thought that was pretty original. And I, I had fun doing it, but the only problem with it was that uh, on the Xbox One X, and then when I played it on PC, I also had the game on PS4, by the way, so I played it on everything. Uh, all of it has lag, and uh, that is probably one of my major gripes with the game is that like you that fucking game that multiplayer is completely broken if you do it with if you if there's any kind of lag because if the dude's in front of you and then all of a sudden i'm getting shot in the shoulder or something because the game lagged and now the guy's over to my right but i'm shooting at the guy and thinking he's in front of me but he's not really in front of me. He's shooting me to the right, and now I'm dead. So if there's any lag on that game at all in multiplayer, it's a complete oh, broken I, piece I, of shit. I, yeah. I just want to mention that like right now, the way the world is, every internet service is a little wonky. Bogged, yeah. You know, and because everybody, you know, so I think I think you're absolutely right. I think that it shouldn't be laggy, and I think that that really diminishes it. But I'm curious if we revisited it in a few months if it would still be that way or if that's just because of the circumstances of the times another major thing that i really like about this game are the like slayer gates you can go to these different slayer gates as you're going through the levels and they're sort of like these small battle arenas where you can have just a lot of uh you know uh challenge going through it and i i enjoyed those a lot because it like really ramps up the difficulty they really make it seem like they want you to do that after you kind of beat the game and have more weapons because a lot of um demons show up that you haven't like like the tyrant and and all these different things or or the or the, the maker drones they show up in those like stages before and you're like i don't know how to fight this thing um I, I actually was playing and I got to the second one and it was, uh, I tried to get to the third one and it was so tough with my current loadout and weapons and armor and stuff, I turned the difficulty of the game down, which I hate doing, because I wanted to beat the whole game at once with every collectible and all the things rather than go back. Um, I was trying to get all the replay value out of it in one sitting. Um, so yeah, but a lot of those were really freaking hard and then me fumbling all my goddamn keys, um, that, like, like the Slayer Gates are really intense, like sometimes. Yeah, now, I'll, I'll, I think one of the, the complaints with this game is people will say, oh, you can just stay alive forever. All you got to do is just keep meleeing, you know, the enemy. You get your health back and you get your ammo back. You use the f- flame belch and you get your armor back. And it's kind of like you can keep doing that. But the, one of those sl- Slayer Gates um, that you do makes it so that you can't just go around and chainsaw everybody because um, some of the enemies... Uh, like if you're just like if it's one of the little like weak ass zombie guys you can just chainsaw them like every you know once you get your uh, gas back but if you're trying to chainsaw like a prowler or one of those like maker uh, whatever yeah guys, I, I, I think you need two or three yeah uh, two, like, two or three so if you go to the slayer gate you can't just continually be grabbing the uh, the gas back. So I found that really challenging to try to defeat that because it wasn't just like a lot of the game is where you're just, you know, cha- chainsaw, kill some guys, chainsaw, kill some guys, you know. So um, I, re- I, and I, I really enjoy uh, the challenge with that. Yeah, and plus there's all the challenges that just happen in levels too where you just fight a few enemies at a time. And some of those are pretty rude, I gotta say. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so I can I can tell you the one thing that 
The one thing I liked most of all about the game is that the game has wonderful pacing. There's a lot of modern games where it's like, now we're going to watch these people walk like it's Lord of the Rings across a field and hear about this and that and the other thing. Or maybe maybe the level is going to start and it's going to be super easy and then it's going to get super hard. And like a lot of games have pacing problems these days. Doom Eternal is not one of those games. The pacing is constantly moving in a forward direction. Um, one of the things I love is even though you're getting exposition from the computer in your base and you're getting exposition from this and that yeah, the pickups yeah. the, you're also getting exposition from the doom slayer himself your character has an agenda and has a purpose and is going and he'll press things and do things in the game without like you didn't know you wanted to do that yeah. but he, he's as much a character that you are watching in the narrative as much as the people who you aren't. Right, like, and I guess, uh, I'll just say one spoiler, but um, like the part where Samuel Hayden, when you when you get him, he's like, you can't just shoot a hole in Mars. And then the, the little pop-up says, shoot hole in Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Press X to shoot hole in Mars, you know? Right. You blow up the whole planet. Yeah. They, they, re they really kept the attitude of uh, the Doom guy, like the way it should be. In the 2016 game, when it starts off and like there's that little monitor and they start telling him like everything that's going on and he just like pushes the monitor away. He's he like, fuck this. It. Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to hear it. Um, I also, I also like that. You know, they managed to. They succeeded at making a Doom game where people who just want to shoot things could be happy. But there's also a bunch of characters. Like when I saw the other Slayer for the first time and things like that. It's like that works. Yeah. You know, it, it. I don't feel like it's taking away from me going and shooting things. Right, because you have like two robot buddies you talk to. You have the betrayer. You have the. Yeah. Um, the con maker, you have like the demons themselves. Like there's a lot going on. Well, uh, to that point, I, I, one thing I have to mention that I also really love is the fact that the, the cut scenes in it, uh, you can skip them all except for the little like logo thing, like right in the beginning when it says like rip and tear, like literally all of them you can skip. And it doesn't do that bullshit where the game designers decide for you which cutscenes you can skip and which cutscenes you can't. Because in some modern games, they'll say, oh, well, there's a couple really important ones that you have to watch. Well, you know what? What if you have played this game 35 times? Why don't you have yeah. to watch that oh, cutscene? Oh, speaking of which, if you play Doom 2016, you can't rewatch the cutscenes at the beginning of the levels, like when you first break out of your um, sarcophagus or whatever it is. Like it just, it's just going to like the actual play points. So I'm glad they did that. So if you do want to re, re experience story missions and stuff like that, you can. The, to that point, uh, another thing, another thing is how many upgrade systems there are. You're getting the power for the ship. You're getting the crystals. You're getting the weapon it's, points. It's you're getting a lot. The, it's just boom, 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 it's, boom, it's, boom. It's banjo kazooie level of fucking collectathon. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little too much, which is a little gripe I have with it, right. but not. It's fine. But but the way that it gives it to you, you're like, oh, I want that. I want this. Right. I want that. Now, do I care that I'm gonna get this album or I'm gonna get this cheat or I'm gonna get this? I don't really care, but you know, the systems were were keeping me interested. And the last thing I really liked about the game is the control. Because like, like we were saying, I know we did a lot of talking about control, but the fact that I have my chainsaw, my flamethrower, my grenade, my weapons, I could switch my weapons, I could do all of that, yeah. dash, double jump, all these things, and I could just do it flawlessly an hour, two hours into the game, I'm dashing around, I'm shooting, I'm doing all this, and I'm not like, oh, what? what's that button? Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. No, it's boom. Yeah. Very few games are, are capable of doing that. Yeah. I guess going to a little story of it that I like is, I like that the UAC was co-opted by the demons and there's like a little hologram like, go get them and you know, join the demons today. It's, it's a great, you know? <laughs> um, you know, kind of like they live, like there'll be, there'll be a sign like submit or join the, join the demons, like whatever. I thought that was good. A lot of people hate this, but I love the platforming in this game. I think Doom, you know, the first few games, you didn't have the uh, verticality and the speed and the double jumps and the momentum and stuff. And I like that in 2016 and they really ramped that up here where it seems like every part of the level is useful for something from the things you swing off of to secrets that you have to go up and climb. In 2016, there was huge stretches of parts where you 
you would just be like jumping along. Here it doesn't feel like you're just dashing to get through levels, you're actually experiencing them, which I like. To get all the Easter eggs, and we talked about the cheats, and how classic Doom is in the game, and all this kind of fun to stuff, which I like. And of course, thousands of pop vinyls that you can pick up, which I'm glad I got them all. I was really worried in the beginning of the game about the platforming, because, you know, old Doom doesn't really have that, you know, that much platforming, and, you know, you're talking about that, and I, I was like, oh man, are they going to put so much platforming in it that I don't like it? But the platforming is so well done that... Um I like I had like no problem with it by the end of the game I was it's like it's part of the game and they, they, they it's well done so it's that's fine with me the first time I knew I was jumping I had to do a jump and then a dash to hit a platform right I was like this is gonna be a shit show oh I'm no. gonna over dash this platform yeah. and it's gonna suck and then when I hit dash and I landed right on the platform I'm like good on you game well that's why you that's, have, good, you that's why I like the rune for air mobility so you have more control yeah. of it which is good and if you have the hook shot like there was parts where I was just like instead of dashing I would just hook into the next enemy <laughs> like zip line into them yeah. um, that I, was the first rune I got yeah that's the one you want yeah uh, and I guess, you know, spoiler alert, there's credits to this game. Uh, I love the credits to this game because it shows everyone at it or Bethesda or Zenimax or whatever that worked on the game or a lot of them, which I really respect that they actually showed the people behind it because you don't, usually don't see that. Of course, they look like everyone that attend conventions with us. They, yeah, right. they look like us. <laughs> I also notice that it's the, it's the most standing decks, uh, desks, standing desks I've ever seen. But, Which I appreciated. Because you got to keep moving. Yeah. That's a, the Doom. It's, oh. They took the chairs away for the. <laughs> and, and, uh, and there was also an after credit sequence, which I liked, which is uh, there's a demon playing with two of the Funko Pops and the Slayer just standing behind it with a shotgun. I thought that scene was fantastic. For me, you know, uh, I don't do speed runs or any of that, but you guys know that I like doing challenges, like no death and things like that. This game has like unlimited, well, maybe not unlimited, but it has tons and tons of challenges that you can do there's like the weekly challenges and challenges for each weapon um i found myself going through and th this might not be for everybody but some people might want to just blast through the game and like play the main campaign and be done with it i understand that but for me having like all these additional um challenges gives this game a like a lot of legs because um you know just for example, one of the uh, challenges that you can do is to try to shoot the uh, the turret off the top of the arachnotrons. So I found myself doing that, and when you complete that, then you get some kind of thing like unlocked, or you might get experience points to like level yourself up. But um, regardless of the things that you get, I didn't really care that I got like experience points or whatever. I cared just like I got a sense of accomplishment, like oh, I did that. And there are lists and lists. Of lists of all these different challenges that you can do and I, I i love that they put that in there Some are really hard like the one where it's like um do these different glory attacks on these pinkies or do glory attacks on this different thing three different ways and i i was constantly reloading checkpoints because i fucked one up and i was like fuck and i had to go back or i'd miss one and i'd have to restart the whole level to find like and sometimes i'm like wait what is a tyrant oh it's a cyber the mini cyber demon i forgot what it was called and i kept doing that and kept messing up the challenges because remember i i played it like 100% completion through the game slowly. So I kept having to do the challenges, which is totally against the Doom Slayers thing, which is rip and you tear. You don't stop to kill guys from three different ways. You don't have to stop <laughs> to get your cheat codes. You don't gotta stop to get some stupid disc that you don't even need. Like the the game, if you play it, the, like you should probably just play it however you want the first time you play it and just rip and tear through it and, and really absorb it. And then go back a second time and do all the collectibles when you have all your upgraded stuff. It's kind of tough doing it at once. I'm, I'm watching him play and he's like sitting on a map and he's like looking at <laughs> stuff and I'm like, the map. I'm like, what? Yeah. We'd be like whispering right yeah. now while we go through oh, I got so I was like banging <laughs> on my desk. I was so frustrated. I, let's, I, uh, uh, let's go into the negatives that we have. Uh, negatives. There's only one part of the game where they use key cards, unlike the other Doom stuff, which is fine. Oh, sorry, like the Doom Slayer keys, like the ones that you need to unlock. Um, 
the big mouth in the um, the, 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 the the gore nest. And I was like, oh, those are gonna be in the rest of the game. They're showing you how to use key cards like these. They never show up again. I, I saw this blue door that was locked. I'm like, is that like a key card? I, like I wasn't really listening to the uh, Vega or whatever his name is. And I was like, what's going on? I got a little turned around and confused with the key cards in the, in the gore nest level, which I didn't like. Um, as we said, there's too many um, collectibles like Banjo-Kazooie style um, that kind of take you out of the game because now you're going on this rip and tear adventure and now you kind of get sucked out and now you're just like, okay, I got to go collect my four things. But, you know, that's fine. Uh, as I said, the controls are difficult for me, but that's because I play like an idiot. Um, I wasn't happy that the chainsaw was now like a melee rather than a weapon like the other games, but I understand why they did that. And I respect that you have, you know, you get this for armor and this for health. It, it makes it, you know, you become more of a utility knife. But sometimes you get confused and you start messing up. But my, my number one complaint is I think the systems are too good until well defined to the point that a lot of the game is rinse and repeat. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to cut this guy. I'm going to get the arm. I'm going to get the weapons. Then I'm going to do a glory kill, get the health. I'm going to get the thing. And then I'm going to do it again and again. And again, and again. And then, you know, Doom took the super super simple story that's just, oh. Yeah, 2016. You know, yeah. Demon, demons from hell. and You kill. gotta close the gate. You gotta kill too close to the sun. Sure. Yeah. And and they turn it into, now there's these these guys. And, it, you know, it's yes, like. Yes, the, the night sentinels of years past. Right. And, and basically the angels have come down to, you know, to work with the demons to get soul energy. And it's like a whole fucking thing. And I'm thing. like, there's all these people. And I'm like, what? are you talking about the, the story of this game is like this like fever dream oh did, like, did you not read all 20 uh you know pickups of the night sentinels right and it's like history? it's like now read these seven novels that we're going to give you one page at a time you know who like, doesn't two? read the fucking doom guy right he rips and he tears he rips and tears books in half that and <laughs> <laughs> That's the game. Ryan, are you trying to say that you're not a fan of the con maker and the night sentinels? And right, it's like what the hell? And the, and, and the Argent energy that they yeah, have to collect. It's like from the it's souls. like I felt like I was in Oz. I'm like waiting for like what what is it this is a place? Very deep plot for uh, a Doom game, uh, I guess, with a lot going on. But it's like, um, but you can just play the game and just go through like a normal yeah. Doom game and ignore all that. But yeah. that's what the Doom guy does. He ignores everybody. You're the the player the, is the only one that fucking cares. Yeah, yeah. The two guys like you fucking nerd. <laughs> like yeah. you're reading all your books and doing it and getting your little discs and all this shit. It's like. Um. So one of the things I didn't I didn't like was uh, so near the end of a level, uh, it lets you fast travel to other areas of the level if you forgot something, and that that's that's fine. But on the map screen, I find that when you, and this is a minor nitpick, a very minor, but when you are selecting the different areas of the level that you can go to, and it's, it's like this 3D map, um, it's like, I find it a very confusing, uh, a very confusing to tell what section you're like highlighted on. I don't think the map, it, when you're playing old doom, the map is just flat and it's very easy to understand. This map is like, I, I feel, I feel like they still, I didn't really like the map in the 2016 game. And I think they still don't have it quite right for, for me. You know what? The, the, the game is very good at making you feel like you're the idiot. Like, oh, you don't know who the Argent de Nur is on, on, in Sentinel Prime City? Well, there's a Colosseum there. You don't know what's going on? Are you an idiot? Oh, you didn't know how to get around your map and know all these little secrets? Oh, you got to punch the, the statue in the leg to hit a button that you had no idea that was there? Your problem, buddy. Better go look it up on, on your phone real quick and take you out of the game. Yeah. Don't tell me you didn't fucking look shit up on your phone when you were playing this game. Oh, I, I have one last... It major, major, major issue with this game. Oh. It's a buggy piece of shit. Oh, I had bugs. When I was in the Fortress of Doom, I couldn't there was there was literally like a hallway, right? And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go from one room to the next room and I couldn't pass through the door. I know. I know exactly what part of your, your it was the part where they're like, oh, go explore your Doom Fortress the last time you're coming here. 
Yes, you have to reload it because it thinks that the, all the doors are closed. That's a bug. I yeah. ran into the same bug. So it's a, bug, a buggy piece of shit. You want to know what's bad? Did you guys try out do, like Doom Two or the original Doom on this game? Yeah. It fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you, you cannot play. It's the shittiest. Like, like you don't want to play Doom like on on Doom Eternal. It's like they they need to fix that. So two times when I was playing, the entire world just goes black. And I have to hit escape. That happened to me. Yeah. To, to, and I hit escape, and then it came back. But the, but it's like it's like we're not gonna render anymore. Just we're not. And two times did I run into invisible blocks because I ended up like jumping on a wall to get around something, and then I'm like in the next area, and like it's where he has to like dash into a block to knock it. Well, that invisible block is always there. Oh. Right. And that happened to me twice. Yeah, there's definitely some bugs, but it's better than a lot of games that come out that are early, yeah. you know, that are early access. I, I wonder what the game would have been like if they didn't push it back more. Right. It'd probably be a disaster. Yeah, that, that's probably the best thing that ever happened to them, that they pushed this game back. Because I was at EGX in London in November. Mm. And when we were there, they had like, they didn't know that they were delaying it or they already paid the money for the ads. So you go in and the place is like, November. Nove no, it says, it says, Doom Eternal, Friday. Uh, <laughs> and it's like on every surface of the convention. Yeah, Friday center. of March. <laughs> there, there's some bugs, there's some problems with it. But the most important thing about a game is like, are you having fun? Did you have fun playing it? And like, would you go back to it? For, for me, like, I, I thought it was, I, I really enjoyed it. I went through the whole campaign. Sure, like some of the, the, some of the plot stuff is like overcomplicated or whatever, but there's the all, there's that skip button. And this was, this was a game where I actually, I actually tried to pay attention to the plot because I love the Doom series. And yeah, like some of the stuff, the con maker and the aliens and all that, I'm like, what, whatever, I don't care because I, you can just go through that and just blast, blast, uh, blast demons all day long and it's it, I think it's a lot of fun just to play. It's almost like they had like the team that writes for Elder Scrolls online <laughs> write this. Yeah. Oh Todd Howard. Todd <laughs> Howard wrote it over a weekend, uh, like George Lucas. Um no, like I was getting riled up there because the game just the game just starts. Doom twenty sixteen ends on this huge cliffhanger where um the robot former human Samuel Hayden steals the crucible that you got from hell, which is which he goes back and then powers Earth and that turns into a whole shit show um, while the invasion's already happening, which I recall from because I read all the I read all the little things. Um, the but the, but yeah, I read all the codexes, but the codec moment, but when the game starts, you already have your super base hell fortress. You're already circling Earth. You're about to fight demons, but where did you get that? How did you get there? They don't really explain any of that. They're just like, yeah, you just showed up, go kick ass. Don't worry about what happened. Like the cliffhanger, it's like it's like you're missing a chapter. Mind you, there's gonna be a bunch of fucking DLC for this game. Well, that's the so, thing. They're gonna have to go back. And they're gonna have to go back because at the end of this game, where do they go from here? Wh why don't I have suit upgrades? Oh, where do they where, go where from here? Where do they from here? here? Everybody's dead. Um, well, Everybody's dead. in the next game, the demons are all gone from Earth. They're just mopping up. Um, the maker planet is basically destroyed because you broke their alliance. Uh, because you woke up the Icon of Sin and sent it to Earth, that broke the accord with the demons. They can now get into the maker world, which they then destroy, I guess. Um, you killed the con maker, which she said kills all existence. So I guess there can't be, it's like an e angels and devil or demon kind of thing. All you know is that there, someone screams when he dies, uh, when she dies too, and you don't know who that is, so it must be like the father, like the god character, and there's still a devil because she made a pact with someone, so in the next game you have to kill God and Satan. That's fine. Well, uh, you know what? That's something I always wondered about since when when I was a kid. You played the original Doom and, you know, Doom 2 and all that. And then you have, you know, the Cyber Demon and you have the Spider Mastermind. But I always thought, like, you're in hell. Like, where is Satan? Where is the devil himself? And you don't fight the de like, the devil? Like, if they're going to bring, like, out anything, like, bring, like, literally have the Doom guy fucking fight, like, Satan. Like, the well, real Satan. In these games, hell and heaven, if you want to call it that, the maker world, are just um, like different dimensions. And then our mythology kind of latched onto them as heaven and hell. But they were just like shitty places you go, kind of like in Event Horizon. You just kind of you just went to that dimension of awful things, and it's kind of like that here. Where they're but you know in this they're siphoning um, 
you know, souls to make energy for their planet to save it. So you just destroyed all that, which is funny because that's the same plot of Prey 2006. They're harvesting people on Earth. They come by every like 10,000, 5,000 years to do that. Um, so they kind of took that a little bit, but I don't know where they go from here. He just kind of walks away at the end. I think, okay, I'm about to blow your mind. Yeah. I think this is where they should go. Okay. Right? Because you have, you have Doom. Mm hmm and you have Wolfenstein, right? Oh no. And they're gonna keep making Doom and Wolfenstein <gasps> oh. games forever. They're gonna keep doing that. Okay. But imagine if they spin off and make a third game with this engine, and it's it's just Metroid. It's just a ripoff. Well, with it, all the collectibles and the, the platforming, at, and at, at the end with, with, with um, New Colossus and Youngblood, Wolfenstein, they pretty much said that there's different realities, and the Doom reality is one of them. So they're making their own multiverse, and in um, Doom, uh, sorry, in, in Doom Eternal, you fight in the pretty much the Colosseum from Quake kind of a thing. So they they're kind of making their whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I get that like cinematic universe vibe just from how they're like amping up the story and stuff but wouldn't it be great if there was like some like robo space pirate version of this that like but it's the same engine and with all the cool upgrades and suits and platforming and everything like it just seems like we are we do need a new metroid prime game yeah it, this the game does have a lot of what the collectibles does feel like that like it already feels like it like it addresses all my problems with metroid prime i mean nintendo keeps saying they're gonna do it but it's not yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they had a Nintendo had some kind of like thing where they showed like Metroid Prime Four. At yeah, one they point, said that but when I the, don't know whatever happened to that. When the Wii was coming out, what's going on with that? Uh, Animal Crossing. That's fine. Okay. All right, so we can talk all day about Doom. Um, I guess if you want to see more, I don't know. I'm, I've been streaming it. Like I, I've been going on and on about it and getting into more uh, minutia and details about the game. I'm still playing the game. I like it a lot. Uh, I, I think it's w worth it. I, I was glad that I played through it. Um, it. I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's some bugs and things like that, but um, overall, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. So it's, it's good. You should get it.